Right. <laughs> right, okay then. Okay, would you guys like to introduce yourselves to the camera, please? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Dan Rickard, uh, and I directed Darkest Day. And you are? My name's Simon Drake, I produced and co-directed Darkest Day. And you also appear in it, don't you? Uh, we, we both do, yes. Right, tell us a bit about your characters. Uh, my character is uh, called Dan. He wakes up on a beach, uh, he hasn't got, uh, he's lost his memory, and he doesn't know how he got there. And then he discovers that Brighton is, uh, has been evacuated and is completely trashed. Right. Yeah. And you play various characters. I'm, yeah, I'm various zombies, zombies and soldiers, and I do also play a character in the house. Hasn't got much of a character though. No. Wait, it's good death. <laughs> you say the film took eight years to complete. Now, not all of that was shooting, I assume. Uh, no, it wasn't. Um, How long was? Well, so it's four about, years. About four years of shooting, and then just a huge amount of post-production. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all of the voices that were recorded afterwards. Literally took two years just getting people back to re-record their voice and uh, you know do multiple takes just to get it right. Make the and all the sound effects, every little bit of sound effect had to be put back into the film. It was almost shot as if it was a silent film. You had to add every rustle of a crisp packet and every gunshot and every zombie growl. So yeah, it's quite yeah. painstaking. Yeah. Right, and the budget was about under a thousand pounds. Yes, it was. It was. Just under a thousand. That was pretty impressive considering you appeared to have a whole army of soldiers and Chinook helicopters <laughs> and things like that flying over, wasn't it? Um, yes, really. It was It was more like a, a model on a bit of string, yeah. onto a blue screen, and then, uh, and then a lot of visual effects work, uh, and then the same soldiers running around again and again and again. Yeah, but as I say, the visual effects work really did blow me away on that. I mean, to say they were just model kits and things like that that you'd superimpose, I mean, you get some of these um, high production, you know, you get these films that are all oh, at the low budget, but they've got quite a yeah. large budget compared to yours. And the special effects look like we've done in five minutes on someone's home computer. <laughs> that's what, you know, that's why I was really impressed with yours. I mean, how come you managed to achieve that, well, I would say well, near Hollywood level, you know, visual effects well, on a, almost a zero budget? Um, I, um I would describe myself as, as a visual effects person who hates visual effects, and I suppose, yeah, when I see a visual effects shot in a film, that take, and I can see that it is, it completely takes me out of the film. So I suppose I'm always aiming for the highest sort of standard, and if I feel that it's not, if it doesn't look real, I would cut, I'd rather cut it out of the film than have it in. Um, and that's why I did a lot of model work. I'm a huge fan of models. You know, I think <laughs> they look better than you know. If you can use a model, use a model, um, and it, it shows. I think. Trying to make it look invisible. That's the strange thing you do special effects. You spend loads of time to make a special effect not look like a special effect. It has to look real. So you end up making it look almost invisible within the context of the story. It's very important. Mm. Now, another thing I was fairly impressed with the soundtrack, you know, the incidental music. Yes. That's one thing I think often elevates certain low budget films above others. Uh, the soundtrack in yours I was very impressed with. I mean, who did the music for you? Okay, uh, the music was actually done by uh, my friend Wilkes. Um, and he's actually in the film. He's one of the main uh, one of the main characters as well. A character with the glasses called James. Uh, was that the one that was always reading? Uh, no, he's oh the other slightly one. Slightly wise cracking kind of comic relief. The guy's yes, a spoiler, on other spice to the end. Um, and yeah, he did the music as well as acted. All right. Film. Yeah, I think I think the, the man music many came, talents. I think the music came first, and I said, well, yes, you, yeah, it'd be great if you can do the music. Uh, do you also want to be in the film a little bit? Uh, I don't think quite realised how, how long it was going to take. <laughs> <laughs> the first half of the film, there's a lot of time with these lads, you know, lazing around the house, getting drunk and listening to music. Now, was that inspired by your student days? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, well, the funny thing, I was a student when I started making the yeah. film, and I suppose that kind of shows. Um, my, feeling, my feeling was, that at the time, if, if there was a zombie apocalypse, most of the people that I knew would probably do that, would probably just raid a pub and get drunk. Um, and that's kind of my inspiration for the film in some ways was, was what would happen, you know, I think I, think I, I kind of see the, uh, I, th I think I thought that'd be quite a funny thing to explore, yeah. that idea. I assume you've seen the TV show The Young Ones, have you? Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> was that an influence at all? Um, not particularly, but now you've said it, I can, I can see that, yeah. Just student yeah, life in general. It's on the, it's on the young ones. Well, yeah. we, were, we weren't ever drunk actually when we were filming those scenes. Um, I, think, I think we tried some, letting some people drink real alcohol on one occasion, and, and we were like, yeah, never again. It just, <laughs> yeah, strangely, it doesn't. It just, it just became people drinking. It didn't really. Mm. You do have is that again having to sort of fake the sort of drunk silliness rather than actually doing it because yeah, everyone just 
got drunk and fell asleep. Yes. Um, so not me, of course. No, exactly. No, we're, we're, we're model, you know, citizens. Yep. Um, yes, so no, no real drinking. Now, the film is out on DVD, isn't it? That's correct. Right. What label's that on? It's uh, been distributed by Left Films. Oh, yes. And it'll be available, or it is available in all HMVs, should be countrywide HMVs, and also on Amazon as well. And also, uh, Love Film, you can uh, watch it by the uh, Love Film. By and there's a making of documentary on there, yep. isn't there? On the DVD, there's a 30 minute making of documentary, which pretty much says everything of how we put the film together on such a limited budget. Uh, and also there is an audio commentary which also goes into a bit more detail about some of those little tricks that we use about getting the film to, to this point. Okay, well that's brilliant. Well thank you both very much. Oh, well, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You.